Um, so C learning came out as an attempt to, um, to bring together a lot of different types of programs. This one here with the kids sitting is mindfulness, represents mindfulness. I used to have labels for these, but they seem to have disappeared somehow. Um, but to integrate mindfulness with trauma and resilience skills, which are about the body and nervous system, um, and a lot of other things, peace education, systems thinking, social emotional learning, because we believe that um, mindfulness is most effective when it's taught in this integrated way. Um, and um, so in order to do that, we, uh, we created a framework. Um, and um, Tracy already mentioned the basis of interdependence and common humanity, but we created a framework where mindfulness is understood in a much broader way uh, than just, um, just present moment awareness, uh, which is one way of understanding mindfulness. And it's not wrong to understand mindfulness that way. But mindfulness can be, we can use mindfulness in many different ways. We can use mindfulness to pay attention to our body and our body of sensations and build up what we call body literacy, like what we were doing at the beginning when we all came in and when Candace was sharing. Um, we can use mindfulness to think about um, interdependence and engage in systems thinking. Uh, mindfulness is a tool that can really be used in many, many different ways. Um, and it might even be more powerful if we expand it uh, and have a more expansive understanding of what mindfulness is. So we've tried to do that in uh, C learning. Um, I'm gonna get back more into the, the idea of the nervous system and resilience because um, as you can see from this, uh, there are a lot of components here and we have lessons and whole chapters of our curriculum that deal with each of these. So we could be here for a very, very long time together if we tried to cover it all. Um, and a lot of these are quite new to education, including the whole systems domain and systems thinking, which is very interesting. But we're going we're gonna to keep our focus on the personal and we're going to focus on resilience and the body since we already explored that a little bit. So, um, so we understand resilience as the, ab the ability to respond in a product productive way to challenges, stress, threats, and unexpected surprises. Um, and we use this really simple um, visual to uh, explain what we mean by resilience and to introduce the concept of body literacy, which is paying attention to what's happening in our body. Um, mindfulness is, a, is generally understood as a as a practice we do with our mind, with our conscious mind. But we also have this body that we need to attend to and our body's telling us things all the time. So, um, so we have this idea of the resilience zone. Kids, even very small kids can understand this really easily, which is when we're in the resilience zone, which we can also call our zone of well-being or our okay zone, we feel like we're in control. We feel like our, our best selves. We feel like ourselves. Right? So we're going along and we might feel a bit happy, sad, we might feel slightly stressed, but you know, generally things are okay. Now, um, question I have for you all is, do we always stay in our resilience zone? Or do we sometimes get bumped out of our resilience zone by maybe something stressful that happens? It could be a, a stressful event. It could be an accumulation of stress. Um, it could be uh, an illness. It could be a, a surprise, an unpleasant surprise that happens. Um, what, if I were to say that sometimes we get bumped out of our resilience zone and we get stuck in our high zone. So if we imagine above this resilience zone, there's something called the high zone and something zaps us or something over time builds up and we got knocked out of our resilience zone and stuck in our high zone. What comes to your mind? What do you think it looks like or feels like for someone to be stuck in their high zone. Feel free to share in the chat or on voice. Una tormenta de emociones. Yes. <laughs> Anxious lack of control. What type of emotions might you be feeling uh, when you say you, you, you might have all these emotions 
or so fight flight, you might be experiencing fight flight, cortisol overload. So the stress hormone um, or stress uh, chemicals in our body, um, anxiety, feeling out of control, fear, anxiety, sadness, feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. What do you think about our decision making when we're bumped out and stuck in the high zone? See people shaking their heads. <laughs> Maybe some poor decisions that we might regret later. Frozen, that's a good one. Yeah, because, um, because now people, we call it the fight, flight, or freeze response, right? Because it's also a mammalian response to freeze. Um, frozen with fear, yeah. Um, th these are all great responses. Yeah, absolutely great, wonderful depictions of what it might be to be stuck in the high zone. Now, if I were to tell you, that below the resilient zone, there's, we can imagine a space below the resilient zone called the low zone. And we could get bumped out of the resilient zone and fall into the low zone, or we could be stuck in the high zone and crash into the low zone. And if we got stuck in the low zone, what might that look or feel like? Has, has any of us felt that way? Without energy. Yeah, lacking in energy. That's a great one. Depressed, sad. Mm -hmm. Wanting to stay in bed and not face things. Yes, I mean, <laughs> it resonates with me. Uh, freeze, okay, so Anne is saying that's where I would put freeze, yeah. Um, freeze could be there too. Uh, boring, yeah, yeah, boring, yeah depressed, tired, um, yeah, freeze as in numb. Yeah, numbness, absolutely, right. Maybe not um, things that normally you, you find fun and exciting, you're just not finding them fun anymore. Maybe not wanting to socialize with people. Uh, you might be perceived as, as being indifferent. Yeah, exactly. So how other people even can see. <laughs> Netflix and chill all day long. Really interesting thing um, about how people just want to, you know, what is it called? Binge watch TV and stuff like that. And especially, you know, you're going to probably look for a TV show or a movie that feels safe to you, comforting, and you're just going to want to binge watch that <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> so yeah, these are all, all things. Um, so obviously we can all relate to this. And one little trick I like to play, which I, I did play, is that I asked you all um, to describe the high zone and low zone without me defining it for you. So you might notice, I never told you what the high zone and low zone were, but you all described them perfectly. How can it be that this model, without me explaining it to you, I did just explain the resilience zone, but we all know what it looks like and feels like to be stuck in the high zone and low zone. Why, why do you think that's the case? And we, Lindy and I, and, and the rest of our team, we go all around the world. We've been to a lot of different countries doing C learning and uh, people say very much the same things, very similar things. So Anne says it's human nature to experience it all. Um, Grazia is saying she's been using C learning with 10 year old children and chapter two, which is where these resilient skills come from. Uh, they were the best thing uh, she could do before the time we had grounding help now strategies were a real resource for her and her children. We keep practicing all that also in video lessons. It's a precious program. Thank you, Grazia. Um, it's a little testimonial there <laughs> for this. Um, but why why do you think um, we all know? And, and Grazia, why do you think why do you think that your students respond to this? So it's human nature. What do we mean by that? Human nature. I'm doing what educators are not supposed to do, which is I'm fishing for an answer, but it could be different answers. So I'm not really fishing for one particular answer. It's part of the fight, flight, fight, freeze response. Yeah, that's a tongue twister. Um, yeah, this is part of our nervous system. And as I, I think I mentioned earlier, this isn't even just a feature of the human nervous system. This is a feature of the mammalian nervous system too. And even beyond that, 
you know, we all have nervous systems that are designed to keep us alive. And so they respond to stress in very similar ways. And so if we're a human being, we have a nervous system. And if we have a nervous system, we know what these three zones are and we have, we have experienced it. Um, so kids, even pretty young kids, they understand, they understand this. Of course, we teach it not through boring lectures like the one I'm doing, but through fun activities that Lindy and others have designed and <laughs> do in the classroom. Uh, where they experientially go through the different zones through stories and activities and, and describe what it's like and can even use emojis and put them up. So, um, so um, one, one phrase that I, I just came up with recently is, um, is that the body has a mind of its own. So we have a mind, and I, I don't think this is original to me, but I don't know where I don't recall hearing it, so I'm going to pretend it's original. Someone's going to tell me who said this first. But I like it. It's, it's simple. The body has a mind of its own. We have to attend. We have to use mindfulness to pay attention to the sensations in our body so we know where our body is. You know, mentally, we might think everything's fine, and our body might not think everything's fine, right? And the great thing is that we can use um, the language of the, of the body and the nervous system the language of sensations to re-regulate the body because the body has a mind of its own and it doesn't, its mind is a little different to ours. Our mind can think, and when I say our mind, let me be a little more specific because I'm speaking nonsense otherwise. <clears throat> we have, as you all know, I'm sure, we have newer parts of our brain like the cortex and neocortex. That's like our thinking brain. The neocortex allows us to have conceptual thought, language, civilization, schools, all these wonderful things. It allows us to think about the future and the past. That's really important. It allows us to imagine things. The body, and by body, I mean the older parts of our brain, our survival brain, um, in our central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. The autonomic nervous system, this older part of our brain does not think in terms of future and past. It only thinks in terms of now. Everything that's happening is happening right now. So, and, and it can't distinguish between illusion and reality the way our neocortex can, because it doesn't have an imagination, hasn't evolved imagination yet, right? It only thinks in now. So when you go and see a movie and there's a car chase or there's a ghost that jumps out from behind the, I don't know, I never watch horror movies, so I don't know where ghosts jump out of them. But anyway, some scary thing jumps out from a closet or anything like that. What happens? Your neocortex knows you're just watching a film and it's all fake and these are actors and this is just light reflected on a, a film screen. But does your body know that? No. Your body jumps out of its seat. Your body is going, Ugh! you know, your body's going crazy. And that's one of the reasons why we enjoy films. Not just horror films, all films, action films, romance films, you know, everything because our body is experiencing it as if it's happening to us. But fortunately, our neocortex is also there saying, well, this is not really real and helping to regulate the body, right? So what this shows is that our body has a mind of its own. If we learn about the way our body responds to things, we can have a lot more control about our body and we can be much kinder to our body because we can listen to it and we can give it what it wants. And what it wants generally is safety and it understands safety through sensations not through thoughts but sensations um, so a lot of the skills we talk about here are physical skills and sensory based skills right so um what am i doing oh lindy's here are you still here lindy this is the slide lindy always does I think Lindy is eating dinner, maybe. <laughs> um, so um, sensation, sometimes it's important for us to think about what is a sensation. Um, and um, we'll say something like, I feel excited, I feel happy, I feel sad. Those are feelings, but they're not necessarily sensations. So how do we know that we are excited? What does excited feel like in the body? Right? So here's an example, I'm breathing fast. My stomach is tight. Those are sensations. 
So sensations are physical things happening in the body that we can sense, that we can feel. Not, they're different from emotions. One of the ways they're different from emotions is an emotion is a whole person state. Like I don't say my left hand is angry, but my right hand is happy. I don't feel my left foot is sad. I have to be sad as a whole person, right? But I can experience pain or tightness or heat in my left hand. I can in fact experience pain in my left hand and no pain in my right hand. I can, I can, the left part of my body can be hot and the right side of my body can be cold. So actually I have lots of sensations happening all throughout the body constantly. So that's the difference between sensations and, um, and emotions. And sensations are connected to all the receptors in our body on the outside and inside of our body. And we can cultivate body literacy by paying attention to what's happening in those receptors. And that's a skill that can be cultivated. It's actually an ancient mindfulness skill. Those of you who have studied a bit of mindfulness probably have heard of mindfulness of sensation. It's one of the four foundations of mindfulness. But this approach to teaching mindfulness is very rarely taught, which is paying attention to sensations. What do they tell us about the state of our body and using that information to re-regulate our nervous system? How do we do that? Um, let's say we notice, and our bodies are all different. Someone said, you know, I, someone I think mentioned I'm not sure if it was Ann or someone else. Um, I tend to store tension in my shoulders. Someone said that, right? Some, some of us might store tension in our foreheads, um, in our backs, I mean, different places. So body literacy is about understanding where we store those sensations of distress. Um, and then what practices can we do to, um, to bring about sensations of well-being in our body? Would, can I, would you mind going back to that last slide? Yeah, of course. Um, I just, I th one thing I always think is really interesting, and I just wanted to point it out, um, especially with that first one, I feel excited. And then the example is, um, you know, where do you feel it in your body? Well, my stomach is tight or I'm breathing fast. Um, doing this work with folks, I've learned that um, how we interpret my stomach is tight and therefore it means I'm excited can be different for different people because mm -hmm. my stomach could be tight and that means I'm nervous. Yes. And it's just so interesting, right? Like how we're conditioned to say, oh, a tight stomach, I'm nervous. And, you know, it might be like in, before I'm going to present a professional development in front of a hundred people. Well, you know, is it nervous or is it excitement or is it kind of both? And how do we, I just, I think the interpretation, I think that's just always really interesting to me. That's a great point. I'm so glad you mentioned that because this is, this is really important. We use, um, what we're trying to do is invite educators and kids to notice sensations, to identify where, where the sensation is, where it is in the body, what is the sensation, and is it pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? And just like you said, a fascinating thing is that Tightness can be pleasant, tightness can be unpleasant, tightness can be neutral. It can mean a lot of different things, right? Um, breathing fast can be pleasant, can be unpleasant, can be neutral, right? Maybe you're breathing fast because you're excited and it's good excitement. Maybe it's bad excitement, you know? So the sensation isn't good or bad. The sensation is just what it is. And any sensation can be, but the sensation can be pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. And it can be very pleasant, it can be very unpleasant. Even sometimes um, pain, I mean, minor pain can be pleasant, it's like interesting. You know, like I get a mosquito bite and I'm like scratching it and I kind of like scratch that mosquito bite hard and it hurts, but it's kind of a pleasant, a weird, pleasant, painful sensation. So, cause it's releasing endorphins or other things. So it's, it's really interesting um, and that's really important. And so you, we can't say from the outside, this sensation is good, this sensation is bad. Oh, it's wonderful you're experiencing that sensation. It's a very personal thing. And that's why we call this body literacy, because we're learning about our own body. Because even though we all have nervous systems, the way our bodies respond to stimuli is unique. Um, and we're the only one that can tell whether these sensations are, are sensations of well-being or not. So yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, so we have a series of, of help now strategies and um, I'd like to invite you to, um, to try 
we're going to try some of these. So um, you might not have any of these things handy. If, if you have a glass of water uh, handy, you can grab one, but you can choose any of these. So uh, you can look around the room uh, for six colors and name, name the six colors you see. You could drink a glass of water, you could walk around the room, or you could just, um, you can push your hands or your back against a wall or door or chair or table. And whichever of these you do, you could also listen for sounds. You can listen for three sounds in the room. That's not on here, but you can choose that one if that's easy. And as you do it, you, as you do this practice, um, we're, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to what you notice on the inside. Do you notice any sensations on the inside? And, and is that sensation pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? So uh, let's just take 30 seconds to try one of these. <laughs> 